in a Texas newspaper in 2019. I'm not sure if I ever shared it with you before. And pardon me if I have, as I will share it again because I believe it is relevant for the time in which we live. In a small Texas town, Mount Vernon, Drummond's Bar began construction on a new building to increase their business. The local Baptist church started a campaign to block the bar from opening with petitions and prayers. Work progressed right up till the week before opening when lightning struck the bar and it burned to the ground. The church folks were rather smug in their outlook after that until the bar owner sued the church on the grounds that the church was ultimately responsible for the demise of his building, either through direct or indirect action for means. The church vehemently denied all responsibility or any connection to the building's demise in his reply to the court. As the case made its way into court, the judge looked over the paperwork. At the hearing, he commented, I don't know how I'm going to decide this. But as it appears from the paperwork, we have a bar owner who believes in the power of prayer and an entire church congregation that does not. Was it the prayers of the church folks that resulted in the destruction of the building or was it just coincidence? Well, based on the church folks' reaction, they were convinced that it was God's response to their prayers that caused the lightning to start the fire that burned the bar down. Yet, when the ramifications of that belief were tested, they sought to distance themselves from it. Throughout this pandemic, persons have been praying to God for a lightning strike that will decimate the, the COVID scourge. Even right now, there are persons who believe that all we have to do is have faith and pray to God and the pandemic will go away. This kind of attitude is to me akin to saying that one has faith and therefore there is no need for works. And so many Christians bandy the word faith around without thinking about what faith really is or means. Saving faith is the belief that God is capable according to his character and motive to do just what he says he will do. That faith has a second part, however, the taking of one's life out of one's keeping and entrusting it into to God's, to God in Christ. In a sense, trust then becomes, in quotation marks, work. If faith is belief, then trust is reliance, something that we have to do. We have to put our trust in God or else faith becomes a mere abstraction. One definition of belief holds it to be the state of mind in which a person thinks something to be the case, with or without there being empirical evidence to prove that something is the case with factual certainty. Very often in our daily lives, believing that God has our best interests at heart, we demonstrate our belief in him by taking many leaps of faith. I have faith in God. And this faith allows me to trust that God has given humankind wisdom to discover the working of a virus and develop a means of impeding its virulence. We are living in perilous times. The tenuous nature of life has become ever so real to us. The preciousness of each breath which we take for granted is being proven by those whose breathing has been severely impaired by the coronavirus, COVID-19. In the midst of these uncertain times, in certain quarters, you hear people saying that they will not take the vaccine because they have faith in God. This understanding of faith in relation to God is not based on a correct apprehension of the, the concept in scripture. In James chapter two, the apostle said that faith without real life demonstration of his possession is non-existent. James is addressing Jewish believers and in this text, he had been dealing with the incidents of partiality in the community of believers in which persons who profess faith in Christ were demonstrating their lack of love and mercy in how they treated persons of lower status in deference to those who were wealthy or perceived to be of a higher status. 
James was not here contradicting Paul's insistence on faith as the only means of justification. He was addressing persons who were already part of the community of believers. However, he was arguing that those who were not producing works of love were given evidence that theirs was not the kind of faith that brought one into a relationship with Christ to such an extent that they were transformed by that relationship. James uses several examples of, of alleged faith being disrobed for lack of works of love. What James is condemning, therefore, was the spurious claim to faith made by some professed believers. He condemned, he contended that authentic faith would be accompanied by acts of mercy, love, and the consideration of the other. And so James asks, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says, oh, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? And so James concludes that faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. If a brother or sister is in need and we speak religious, really talk to them, but do nothing. Do not do anything within our ability or resources to do. And so remediate their circumstance. Then what we say we believe is nullified by our lack of mercy, compassion, and mutual concern for the well-being of the other. If we know that some medication can help far more than it can hurt, and we discourage others from taking it, we are guilty of acting unlovingly and become complicit if they become seriously ill or die. If we know that without our taking a vaccine, we put people at risk for serious illness or death, and we have no medically valid reason for not taking it, except to say we believe in God, then our claim to love our neighbors is nullified. I remember years ago hearing it said that sometimes we pray and then duck because we are afraid that God may want to use us to answer the very prayers that we have prayed. We must understand that all healing comes from God and that God has already provided in nature the cure for all our diseases. We need to praise God whenever human wisdom enables us to have the understanding to use what God has provided in nature to enable healing. Please then commit me to juxtapose James with Numbers chapter 21 and verses 4 to 9. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. From Mount Hall, they set out by way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a, a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Numbers 21, verses 4 to 9. The people had forgotten what their life before the wilderness was, and so they complained against God and Moses. God allowed them to be stung by poisonous snakes, and their mortality was great. So great that they came to their senses and sought God's forgiveness and healing. They asked Moses to pray for them, to God, and God answered, now, God could have just healed all of them with just a spoken word. But according to one commentator, God did not at once take away the plague. 
each individual received healing only when he performed an act of faith by looking at the serpent. It is believed that it was not the serpent that brought the Israelites healing, but the fact that they lifted up their eyes and directed their heart towards the Heavenly Father. The healing did not come from the serpent, but from God. However, God chose to use the bronze serpent as the medium through which to manifest his healing power. The people were to demonstrate their faith in God through their work of looking at the bronze serpent and believing God for the healing. God could have chosen any other object by which to demonstrate God's power, but God chose the bronze serpent and required the people to look up. Who is to say that in this COVID pandemic, with such an alarming mortality, that the bronze serpent that God has provided is not the many vaccines now being offered? Let me conclude by telling you that my silent prayer to God in relation to this pandemic was answered in short order. Now, this is not an audible prayer that I made. But I had this earnest desire in my heart, which went up to God. Now, if you recall, there was a concern that with the vaccine rollout, rich countries would be able to vaccinate their people and poor countries like ours would not be able to afford it. And even if by some means we could pay for it, the question was, would there be enough supply by the time the richer countries took care of all of their people. It was therefore an answer to prayer when in early 2021, we started receiving vaccines free of cost to us. I had my first shot on, the, on February 2nd and my second shot on Valentine's Day. I had faith that God would do what was in our best interest but I had to work to find out when the vaccine was gonna be available for me after the frontline workers. And so I spoke to my doctors and to find out whether or not it is possible for me to get the, the shot. Sisters and brothers, God does respond to our prayer. God does respond to our prayer of faith. But we are expected to do our own part. It is not an act of love when we know that our action, our inaction can hurt others. Faith, for it to be the kind of faith characteristic of the community of believers must be the kind of faith that is followed up with action. It is not that faith, it's not that work saves, but if you are indeed saved, works will be produced. And today I invite us all to think about what it means to be people of faith what it means to be our brother's keepers, what it means when we are told, first of all, we ought to love God, and then we ought to love our neighbors as ourselves. May God apply his words to our hearts. Amen.